Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome back to YouTube. My name is C Raptor, and it's time for us to continue our Learn to Play series for the American Destroyer Line as we take a look over Tier 7's USS Mahan. Mahan's name has, well, it has a lot of power in naval history and naval theory craft and naval warfare. So does this ship live up to that, ne that the legacy of that namesake in World of Warships? And the answer is, surprisingly, yeah. Yeah, this is a really good boat these days. Now, Mahan, like most of the American destroyers, has had a bit of growing pains over the years. When the line first came out, what, I guess seven years ago now, this was not a very good ship. Even a full stealth rig Mahan had a detection over seven kilometers with a middling gun reload and a really bad gun traverse. And again, at that time, a torpedo range that still, still was shorter than her detection radius at tier seven. And in those days, tier seven ships could see tier 10 games. That's right. Your Colorado could be pulled into a game with a Yamato, ladies and gentlemen, back when World of Warships was new and... Mahan could be pulled into games with gearings and shimikazes. It was not the most enjoyable experience in the world. But a lot of things have changed over the years. Mahan has changed, matchmaking has changed, and this ship is much more comfortable to play for a variety of reasons than she used to be. So we're going to take a, take a spin around the ship, talk about what she does well, what she doesn't do well, um, look at some possible skill builds, and if you've seen the other videos in the line, you're going to see some familiar things. But... Mahan is also the first ship in the line that we can start seriously talking about torpedo capability. So when we get to those, when we get to those uh, skills, we'll spend a little time talking over those and uh, and see if it's worth it. Okay. So let's have a look around Mahan. Starting as we do with survivability, her base HP. You see her fully buffed. That's with uh, survivability expert sixteen and a half thousand. Base HP on uh, Mahan is a little over fourteen thousand. That's not amazing. It's actually bottom third as far as tier seven destroyers go, because in the years hence, Wargaming has added quite a number, <clears throat> excuse me, of tier seven destroyers that have, well, I've got a lot of health. I'm looking mostly at the Germans. Ships like Z39, Leberich Maas, and Z31 all have a lot of health to throw around the board. Um, but also um, FR25, the premium Italian destroyer, uh, and uh, even uh, Vauquelin, the French tech tree ship, have got a notable chunk of health over Mahan. So like Farragut at Tier 6, you have a bit of a disadvantage here. Now, it is not nearly as extreme as it was with Farragut. Farragut is, again, as we noted in that video, all these years later, the worst health you can possibly have in a Tier 6 destroyer. Mahan is not that. But she's only a few steps above the worst. So... Like Farragut, it's a ship you want to treat gingerly early in a game, preserve her health as jealously as you possibly can, and then in the late game, then maybe you can be a little aggressive, you can be a bit of a bully, particularly with her main battery, which is really good. We're going to talk more about that in a minute. Maneuverability and concealment. Um, base speed of 35 knots, the 36.8 you're seeing there, is with a speed flag. 560 in the turning circle, 2.7 on the rudder shift. She handles pretty well, right? In fact, the handling on this ship is going to feel very, very, very similar to Farragut. She has almost the same... She's a little slower, but she has almost the same handling characteristics. So that's going to feel good. Other similarities to Farragut come in when we start talking about concealment. If you remember a full stealth rig, Farragut was 6.6 .6 kilometer detection on the surface. You see there a full stealth rig, Mahan, 6.7 on the surface. So for a couple of tiers here in the middle of the line with the Americans, you're going to get have to get used to this six and a half ish detection radius, and it is not comfortable any more comfortable here at tier six than it was at tier seven. In fact, it's probably it's arguably even worse here at tier seven, and the main reason for that is matchmaking. Matchmaking when you're in tier seven boats start, especially as a destroyer, starts to become more challenging, and the main reason for that is you still don't have access to that upgrade slot five, which gives you the concealment module, which every other destroyer who's above you can take if they wish. So that means that you will be outspotted by, well, just about every tier eight and nine destroyer you run across when you're bottom tier. There are obviously exceptions. Most of the big gunboats in the Russian and the French lines, for example, um, even a full stealth rig is some somewhere north of seven, right? So there are exceptions, but in general, you are not that stealthy and your health is a bit on the low side. So all those lessons you learned in Farragut about how to, you know, B 
be cautious in cap circles early, jealously guard your health, and so on. Uh, you're going to need those. You're going to definitely need those in Farragut. Um, the other thing, of course, is we talk about matchmaking, Farragut being Tier 7, she's going to start to see a lot more radar. When you're playing down at Nicholas and Farragut, the only radar you might run into is the, you know, the occasional Belfast or Atlanta or Indianapolis, which are each threats in their own way, but it's not that common. But starting with Farragut, we didn't talk about it a lot, but starting at Tier 6, you're going to be up-tiered into Tier 8 games. Certainly here at Tier 7, you're going to see a lot of 8 and 9 opponents, a lot of 8 and 9 cruisers, light and heavy, that will have access to radar. And that is going to start to make your life very, very complicated. So the American destroyers, I mean, Mahan is a very critical juncture in this line because it's that bridge point between um, the, the purely gunboat style play that you had down at tier five and six. And I say purely, that's more of an acknowledgement that the, the torpedoes are on the are challenging to use. Okay. And as you move up the line, the torpedoes become a little easier to use. The guns remain good. But now the matchmaking and the opponents you start to face become more challenging. And you really have to play very cautiously. Okay, so those lessons you learn in Farragut, you're going to need those on the way. And Mahan's going to teach you more of those. Hopefully, hopefully good ones. Uh, we didn't talk about armor. I'm not going to bother. It's like 16 mils throughout or something. Yeah, you're not, you're, not, you're not stopping any shots. So don't worry about the armor scheme. You're a destroyer. You're getting slapped around. If you get shot at, it's bad. So the ship is not that stealthy. She's... Average speed, we said 35 knots, and 35 is, well, honestly, pretty average for the tier. If I'm honest, it might even be a little on the low side. Let me look at this. Is it worst in tier? No, it's not quite worst in tier, but it's definitely on the low side. So you're not super fast. You're not that stealthy. What do you do well? Well, I'll tell you what do you do well. Your main battery is amazing. We are still retaining um, the 5-inch 38, the, 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 the ubiquitous American destroyer gun here. Mahan, of course, having three, uh, two up forward and then three back aft. Now, note this turret configuration. You're going to see this turret configuration again. This is not as... Remember, Mahan's middle gun... I'm sorry, Mahan's... Farragut's middle gun was very challenging to use. We talked about the gun angles on that one. The gun angles here on Mahan's third turret here amidships uh, are much easier to use. You will have you will not nearly have as many trouble as much trouble firing this this gun over the for, uh, forward or aft. All right? So aft may be a little more challenging because you've got that superstructure immediately adjacent to her that does cut off some of the angles. She probably has about a 30 degree arc back here towards the stern where you really can't fire the gun. But she has a very clear arc forward. You really only have to worry about shooting uh, around the funnels and the superstructure, you've probably got maybe only a 20 to 25 degree arc up forward that you don't have access to that forward barrel. And when you have access to that one, you might you might not have access to this one. Bottom line is, it's easier to fire more of these guns, and you have more of them, and they have a better reload. 3.3 seconds. That's a, that's a significant buff over the four seconds that you were working with down at tier five and tier six. All in, Mahan has the highest gun DPM of any Tier 7 destroyer. Straight up, period, flat out, unquestionably. In fact, there are Tier 8 destroyers that this ship puts to shame with how much firepower she can put down range in a short amount of time. The trick is, and as we've talked about this, you've got to be, you have to be super frosty about when you use it and when you don't. Now, if you're just going to sit behind an island or sit and smoke and farm somebody, hey, you, you do you, go to town, have fun. But if you're going to do knife fights and you're going to brawl other destroyers, you have to know what you're up against, or at least have a rough idea of what you're up against, and pick your battles very carefully. Preferably, and I've said this before and I'll say it again many, many times to make sure you hear it, you want to be picking on lower health destroyers that have gotten shot at by your teammates that haven't played as smartly as you have over the course of a game. And then in the middle of the late game, you can push up and you can out-DPM them in a gunfight. Now, you will take damage, obviously. But if you've preserved your health for that mid and that late game, you have the ability to be a bully and win those gunfights in situations where if you had taken, if you had accepted that engagement, you know, in the first three minutes of a game, you would have gotten your face melted off, even with your higher DPM, because they're shooting at you, their whole team's shooting at you, and you have less health than just about everyone you're going to run across. So, the story for Mahan is the same as the story for Farragut. Play cautious early, preserve your HP, save it for the late game when you're a bully. And these guns are really good. 
Okay. Uh, th- yeah, you've, you've 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 been firing these guns for a while now. Now the now the reload gets even better. Eleven point seven on the range is a little worse actually than you had at tier six, but not so much you'll notice. And honestly, at max range. The hitting things with these guns is not that simple anyway. If it's a slow-moving battleship, somebody parks stationary, yeah, you'll be able to hit them. But otherwise, nah, you're not going to hit somebody who's seriously maneuvering at long range with these guns. So yeah, excellent, excellent main battery. Uh, it's what Mahan does best. But it's not all Mahan does. Because now, ladies and gentlemen, we've moved up to proper torpedoes. Now, Mahan is a bit of a mashup between Nicholas and... Well, if I'm honest, she's a mashup, kind of a mashup between Nicholas and Benson. But this is the first time you're going to see these torpedoes. So we'll say it's a mashup between Farragut and Nicholas. She does have three torpedo launchers, one amidships and then one on each side. If you remember Nicholas, of course, all of her torpedo launchers were along the sides of the ship. It gave her great flexibility. Mahan retains a little bit of that tactical flexibility because she has an extra launcher. So... If you want to put eight torpedoes in the water off one side of the ship, you can do so uh, as soon as they're reloaded, right? Just like a Farragut could. But you still have another launcher on the opposite side of the ship in reserve. And there's a lot of opponents, a lot of players you'll run across who maybe haven't played the line, or sometimes they just forget, and you can catch them off guard with this extra rack of torpedoes. Now, Mahan is the first American destroyer in the line that gets access to torpedoes with a range longer than her detection radius. You see there, these torpedoes have a 9.2 kilometer range. The alpha is still not amazing. Only 11 and a half thousand, 87 second reload, still not great. Um, 61 knots of speed, that is a buffed number. The base speed on these, I believe is 55 knots. Let me make sure and verify that. Just to look at my spreadsheet here. Yeah, 55, yeah, 55 knots. So they are not the fastest torpedoes in the world. You're seeing there 61 knots because I've mounted the torpedo module that buffs the speed and I've taken the captain skill that buffs the speed. That 61 knots on that 1.1 detection means, hey, you actually will occasionally land some, some hits that you otherwise might not have. That gives the opposing, anybody who spots these things, let's say you've got an opposing battleship that sees these things, these torpedoes coming in, that extra little bit of speed knocks off almost a full second of his reaction time. It goes from a 7.7 second reaction time to a 6.9 second reaction time. So it's just that much less time your opponent has to react to these torpedoes. Um, I will not pretend these are amazing. They really aren't. They're a little anemic for the tier. Honestly, 11,500 damage is, well, it's not great. It's not worst in tier, but it is like second or third worst in tier. So it's nothing to get excited about. They do have decent flood chance on them. Um, so they've got that going for them. But the bottom line is, is that um, they're, they're mediocre. But they'll give you the ability to torpedo things well outside your detection radius. And that is something you're going to, that's a skill you're going to need to develop. So if you're playing through this line for the first time, maybe you've never played a Japanese purely torpedo boat before. Um, now's the time to start training yourself how to use these things from a positional standpoint, where to put the ship, how to lead them, so on and so forth. Okay. Um, I will talk briefly about her alternate torpedo armament because when you first start playing this ship, you will have the stock torpedoes. And these are the same torpedoes you had down at Farragut. So if you're playing a stock Mahan, you're still struggling with these things. So yeah, struggle bus means you really want to try for that torpedo upgrade just as quick as you can. Uh, it is not pretty trying to play this ship with 6.4 kilometer torpedoes. It's, it's arguably even worse than Farragut, okay? But by the time you pick up these, it is a little easier to use. And you've got that extra flexibility of having 12 available in three quad launchers. So very, very nice. Depth charges. You see there, she puts down eight bombs in a string on that 5,000 damage on the American bombs. We've talked about that before. Again, like we talked about with Farragut, because she has so few bombs in a string, I've actually, for the moment, mounted the module that gives her a couple extra charges of depth charges. Once you hit eight bombs, this becomes a debatable. Uh, it becomes, uh, becomes debatable, right? You, could, you don't have to do this. I do it. Just because once I've, like I've said before, once I know where a sub is, I want to make sure I have plenty of depth charges available to wipe that guy out and knock out, you know, remove all his escape paths. Um, it is arguable. So if you don't want to do that, that's that's fine. We'll talk more about that later. But no, you have the depth charges. They're very, very good. You should be trying to utilize these when you can, when there's a submarine in your game, because the opposing submarine will absolutely hate you. These hit him like trains. Anti-aircraft fire. 
If anything, this ship is a bit of a step backwards from Farragut. And the main reason is this. She doesn't, her short range aura is worse, right? She lacks the Brownings. She still has the five main battery guns that are dual purpose. So they form an outer bubble. That's okay. It's not too bad, but her inner bubble is a little worse because all she has are some of these little 20 millimeter Orlicons running around. And these are good guns, but she's got six of these, two up forward, two amidships, two back aft, and that's it. So again, I will still recommend you take defensive fire, but I'll give you the same warning that I gave you on, on Farragut. When you're up against a tier eight carrier, you need to temper your expectations, play very cautiously, understand what, I would say understand, learn what you can and can't kill <laughs> with the AA. German planes, right? Fragile German planes off of, say, a Parseval. Yeah, you can probably shoot those down. Um, more beefy planes, British planes, like off of an Implacable or an Indomitable, you're going to really struggle to kill those. Now, you're going to get damage on them, but you probably won't get many plane kills. So play very cautious with your AA in terms of how you manage it, um, when you push when you push your defensive fire button, presuming that you take defensive fire, and your position on the board. Because sometimes your position is, I'm near, an enemy, I'm near friendly ships, I want to add my AA to theirs to contribute to help defend them, and that's okay. Um, sometimes if you're off on your own, it becomes a much greater risk, and you're inviting the carrier to attack you if you're all by yourself, especially in this ship, which still doesn't quite have like really solid AA like you will a little higher up the line. Uh, let's talk about consumables. Hey, we've had this conversation before. Nothing has changed. You get damage control. You get the American smoke, which lasts just a little longer. Each tier we go up the line, the American dis smoke, smoke gains a little more dispersion time. In other words, it stays around a little longer. Uh, and then, of course, as we've noted before, you have the choice between engine boost and defensive fire. I will continue to recommend you take defensive fire. If you don't want to, hey, you do you. I'm not going to tell you how to play your ship, okay? Um, Captain skills. Uh, we talked about uh, basically kind of the main standard that I would recommend, preventive maintenance, last stand, survivability expert, and concealment. My next three points, I would recommend adrenaline rush. I've had some people kind of arguing with me in the comments, some of these other videos, like, why is this such a good skill? And for me, I understand why you might not want to take it. I still feel like it's really it's really useful, especially on a destroyer. Uh, you know, Sometimes that those few extra seconds, that extra two to three tenths of a second you get on the gun reload, it makes a difference. Sometimes the extra 10 seconds, 10 to 15 seconds you can get on a torpedo reload makes a difference. So you, this is a skill that you'll almost always get a little use out of, right? Um, I like Fearless Brawler. Not only does it give me an extra flak puff uh, when I'm in an open water gun brawl, and honestly, if you're if you're running around with this ship, sooner or later that's going to happen with her detection, you get that extra reload buff uh, down to three seconds. So that's really, really nice. Uh, turret Traverse, because again, your Turret Traverse is still not amazing. Uh, she's it's, This is worthwhile, in my opinion. That gets your Turret Traverse down to about 10 seconds, so it's manageable. And then for those last three points we have floating around, I've gone for Swift Fish, which I recommend. And then I've upped the Flood Chance on the Torpedoes, which is, eh, that's up to you. If you want it, great. If you don't want it, find another place to stick that point. It's kind of It kind of really doesn't matter. And then... Um, Upgrade modules is pretty straightforward. Main armaments, of course. Again, I've taken defensive fire. I know I said early on this is debatable. Uh, again, I take this one because I have a preference for having the re reducing the cooldown on this 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 uh, ability. I want it to come up quicker. I want it to always be available when I want it. Um, however, um, the A on the ship is weak enough that I could see an argument for engine room protection, or if you don't want to play with DFA, engine boost mod, either one of those would be great. You wouldn't, you will not, you will not miss anything. Okay. Um, again, like before here in slot three, main battery mod, you could do worse. Uh, aiming systems, I don't recommend. A guns, that eh, wouldn't be terrible. I've gone torpedo tubes solely for the torpedo speed buff. Okay, because I want to try and get that torpedo speed a little higher. And in slot four, as I noted earlier, I've done depth charges. Uh, I would not recommend steering gears or damage control. The only other one I think you should possibly consider would be propulsion. That way, if you're sitting in smoke and torpedoes are coming in, maybe you can get away a little faster or something along those lines. So yeah, the, the, the choices for upgrade modules in the middle tiers is not amazing. It'll get better as we start getting up to tier five. It's, I mean, sorry, tier eight, and certainly at tier nine, because at tier nine is the first time, in my opinion, in this line, we can start having serious conversations about two different ways you can play the ship. Two completely, radically different ways you can play the ship. Um, but until then, you're kind of constrained a bit by your upgrade choices. 
All right, so let's um, let's go have a look at a little Mahan gameplay. I'll talk you through a game, um, and we'll come back here for a quick recap and, and an outro. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the North Spawn of Haven. Now, one of the nice things when you do get a game in Mahan where you're top tier is that you're a little more comfortable, a little more confident. I mean, that's typically where you are, right? When you're in these middle tier games, you're used to being bottom tier. We saw that last time in Farragut. But this time in Mahan, I'm top tier, and that is a nice feeling. The opposing carrier, I do have a carrier in this game, is a ranger. That tells me that I want to be... Uh, first of all, it tells me that my AA can be effective against him. It also tells me that I will be able to uh, to save those defensive fires for the right kinds of planes. And again, for again, with an American carrier, I want to be worried about those big HE bombs. Those are why I particularly want to shoot down. Now... Let's talk a little bit about screening teammates. One of the things I've talked about Ed, through this series as an American destroyer, and this lesson probably also applies to the high-tier European destroyers, knowing when to leave your A on and when to turn it off. Ordinarily, as I've noted before, my default in a game is leave it off. But here in this game on Haven, um, I see the torpedo bombers coming in early, and I decide to leave it on because of these things I am not afraid of. So... I'm going to I'm going to pump out every little scrap of A damage I can on these planes to try and help screen my teammates. In my opinion, this is something that you need this is a lesson you need to be help teaching yourself as you work up the line because by the time you get to Benson and and certainly Fletcher and Gearing, if you invest into your A a little bit, you will be able to make a meaningful contribution to your team's AA defenses. But if you, if you just leave your A off all the time, you are literally leaving XP on the table when there's a carrier in the game. So learn, learn, to, learn when to toggle that button and learn what you should be worried about and what you shouldn't be. Those torpedo bombers, not really a big threat to me. Happy to chip in. You see there, 8,500 plane damage, a couple of kills, and, uh, and yeah, really nice. Now, I've moved up to this position. This is a very aggressive position on Haven. For an early destroyer, this is frequently suicide but i'm doing it here for two reasons one is i want to be able to put torpedoes right behind this island right in front of me not the one i'm off just off my port side but the one in the distance right that's a very common place for opposing destroyers to snuggle up behind while they work on capping and i'm not going in that cap circle yet my detection is too high looking across the opposing destroyer lineup i don't want to fool with it just yet certainly not with a submarine in the game who also outspots me so I'm going to just going to dump these torpedoes here in the hopes of maybe catching someone sleeping. Now, what's the downside to that? Well, as I said, this is in a very, I am in a very aggressive position. And I'm about to go around a blind corner. So I'm going to pause the game again here real quick and talk about the risk. Because anytime you do this, and this is not a lesson for American destroyers. This is a lesson for any destroyers. I am operating 100% blind. I have no idea what's around this corner. There could be an opposing destroyer three kilometers from me when I come around the corner, and I have no idea until I'm on top of him. Now, my A is still on, and, and again, I pop the defensive fire here because those are those big, nasty HE bombs that I want no part of. I want those to take as much damage as possible. The opposing Ganice is over here. His secondaries are already all over me. And luckily for me, the opposing carrier is, well, he's struggling a bit to, to, to kind of make, it, make a play here. Now, I screw this up a bit. The Ganice and now secondaries get a little chip damage. They get a fire. And, and I should have smoked sooner than I did because, again, my A is ticking. The planes are still here. But I'm still sitting in the wide open. The Ganice is taking pot shots at me again. His secondaries get another fire. The bombers get nothing. And I'm doing great work against them. But now, now what's my problem? Do you see it? I'm technically outside my detection radius, my base detection radius but I am on fire for the next 20 seconds. Anytime you're on fire in any ship in World of Warships, your base surface detection goes up by two kilometers. So my surface detection right now is nearly nine kilometers. And I've, that's, an, that's a Ganice now back there. Clearly a secondary bill of Ganice. I should have already smoked, but I didn't. So in a moment, I'm going to realize my error. There it is. We put the smoke up. But I'm stuck with this fire, and so I've made a bit of a cardinal error. What have I been saying about Farragut? Don't give up too much health too early. Sure enough, here I am. I've given up probably about two or 3,000 more HP than I should have. The good news is that now that I'm in smoke, I can just sit here and farm this guy for a bit. So this smoke is doing me two, 
two bonuses. It gets me away from the, the Ganice's secondaries, and it allows me to start farming some chip damage on this guy. Now, of course, I'm really looking for a fire, but I'm not leading these shells very well. In fact, I'm shattering a whole lot of these against the roof of his forward turrets, which is a little frustrating. As it is, though, we do get some chip damage here, and it looks like he might push straight through, so I go ahead and dump the torpedoes uh, in, out in front of him on the off chance that he does. Now, the Ranger has brought back his rocket planes. Again, these do not frighten me over much, so I'm just letting my AA tick here. Free damage on these planes while I sit in smoke. They can't spot me, and I can just chug away and contribute to the defense of my team. I do move up to the opposing end of the smoke cloud that I've laid here with the hopes of maybe getting some damage here on this Trento, or more accurately, with the idea that I might eventually be able to get some damage on this Ganice now, who is stopped completely, by the way. I don't know if you've noticed, he's stopped behind that island. Trento is kind of, he stopped dead for a moment, realizing that's not necessarily amazing. And you can see here that the gun reload on these things is, is just so amazing. I'm just, every three seconds, basically, I'm pumping out shells. Ah, oh, it feels so good. Now the Gnice is moving up a bit, and we're going to start trying to get some chip damage on him while still kind of clinging to my smoke cloud here. This is a very totally valid way to play this ship, sit in smoke and farm. Now when you do this, though, you have to remember that you need the enemy, sorry, you need your friendly team to be spotting for you. Uh-oh. 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 Whoa! All skill, no luck, ladies and gentlemen. I believe those were the Trento torpedoes that slid right underneath my screws at the back of my hull. Now again, I'm doing something perhaps a little foolish here. I'm picking a gunfight with a Ganice, but he's running directly away from me while my AA is chugging away at these at these dive bombers off to my north. And I don't know if you caught it, I got a I got a permanent disable there on one of his torpedo tubes. I knocked it out forever. So that feels nice. That's a nice that's a nice pickup. Now, let's, let's pause and have a look at the tactical situation here. Sorry, the strategic situation here for a minute. The opposing team is very heavy at the bottom end of the B cap. You see there and along at about F, F and G, what is it, about five or so. There's five or six ships down there. Whereas on my side of the map, it's me, the Colorado, and the Zara off to my south. That is it. On the other side of the map, the opposing team is a little thinner. It's a little more even. We have a Leon, a Nagato, a Ramat, a Nicholas, and a Cesare kind of in that direction. They have a roughly the same number of ships. It's about a four-on-four, four, five-on-four fight over there. But on this flank, we are in bad shape in terms of numbers. And so I decide it's not worth pushing up there and getting slapped around. I'm going to back off a bit while continuing to look for places that I can take cheap shots with my guns as often as possible. Trento looking like an easy target right here, so we're going to take that. He's turning back in a bit. And, um, yeah, I'm not going to get a whole out of this, but... The beauty of these guns is it's like, well, you know, if you missed a salvo, hey, three, it's three seconds later. Just pull the trigger again. Colorado does put the Trento out of his misery. And uh, I'm going to double back now. Again, I'm leaving my AA open. You, I'm on, I should say. You can see the Ranger bringing in the torpedo bombers, and I suspect he's going to make a run for this Colorado. There's not much else over here worth going after unless he wants to go all the way back to the New York. So I'm totally content to leave my AA on here and contribute whatever damage that I can get into these torpedo planes to help out my friendly ships. Because, again, the torpedo planes are not a huge threat to me. That, that torpedo squadron swallowed a good chunk of flak there. We picked up a couple of quick plane kills, and, uh, yeah, he doesn't actually get any of those into the water. Now, have a look at the mini-map. The Cachalot is turning back this way. The Visby is right around the corner. The New York is right in front of me. Hmm. Hmm. So I'm going to turn back south here and try to guard this flank. I don't want them to, to slide through this gap and have free shots at the retreating Colorado and the Zara over here. Particularly the New York, who I have enough torpedo power to put out if he is uh, foolish enough to come around the corner. I'm secretly hoping this Cachalot will come around the corner because there are few things in this game as satisfying as wiping out torpedo an opposing direction. submarine with your depth charges because it just oh it feels so good doesn't it oh i love doing that i know i know it, it sometimes you know submarines are irritating and yada 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 and people don't like them but man they're a hell of a lot of fun to kill <laughs> i have my a turned off that's intentional i do not want the carrier to know where i am right now if my a was on 
I'd be plugging away at those dive bombers off to my starboard side. But he doesn't know that I'm here. I don't want him to know that I'm here. And so with my AA off, I'm able to lay a little bit of an ambush here. I put the starboard torpedoes out for the Gnice. I catch a glimpse of the sub, put, put a few shells into him as he does an emergency dive. But this New York still looks like he might be coming up around the corner. And remember me talking about Mahan's extra torpedo power? We're going to take an opportunity here and flex it by flipping to get the port torpedo tubes into action. My main concern is I don't want this guy pushing any closer over here to the SAR, towards the SAR and the Rado, and we're now backed up by an opposing New York than I have to. So he gets the port torpedoes. Starboard one's already going down range at the Gnice, and I'm going to smoke up again because I want to preserve my health. I don't want to get shot off the board here. Now, that would have been a good torpedo salvo, except... The Pope, my friendly Colorado, knocked that guy out. So at the end of the day, this smoke is largely wasted. It's unfortunate. American smoke is so valuable, and I would have had the opportunity to maybe sit in here and farm some damage, but alas, does not happen. Nine minutes gone, nine ships dead. We've got a narrow lead on the strength of, well, our ship advantage. Uh, both teams ticking up two caps. So now, as I look at the mini-map, what do I see in front of me in this cap circle? I see only the opposing Visby. This guy does not frighten me. A Visby is, if I was lower on health, his rate of fire, his guns might be a bit of a threat, but where I am, I out DPM this guy, I have more health than he does, and uh, yeah, I feel really good about getting in here and picking up this cap. If I'm really fortunate, I'll still be able to wipe out that opposing submarine by take, chasing him down and dropping depth charges on his head. But for now, my main thought is get into the cap, pick up the cap. That's my focus. The Visby, to his credit, is staying close to the cap, playing around in here, trying to play a little defense. Now he backs out of it. Zara is in a bit of a compromising position with that Gnice now staring him in the face. And sure enough, the Visby picks him up. He, on, what do you have, like 15 health or whatever? The, those European guns are good enough for that. The opposing Gnice, though, is also starting to get low. So now <clears throat> we're tied up on ships again. We have about a 60, 80 point lead here. I'm going to step into B and start capping this as we cross over the halfway mark of the match. I'm expecting the Visby to come back and fight me. And sure enough, there he is at the bottom of the cap, Ryujo picking him up with the AP dive bombers, which really aren't a threat to him. AP bombers versus destroyer is basically a waste. You, you're, you'll never get anything more than overpens. Now I'm expecting him to push into the cap here. There he does. And so now I'm going to get my guns flipped over. Let's move up and fight this guy. Yep. I should be able to beat a Visby in a gunfight. I have way more DPM than he does. I'm going to put some torpedoes out. Just, well, I, I was going to try. There we go. Probably there it is. I want to make sure, give him more things to think about. You'll see me do this sometimes when when kind of gunfighting destroyers. I want to, I want to if I, my torpedoes are available, I'll put those down range because I want to give them something else to think about. But this guy's in a, more than a bit of a pickle here. We're going to get him off the board, and then we're going to pick up B very handily because my team has cleaned up the Gnizen now behind me. That just leaves the Cachalot and the Ranger. In fact, from here, I basically have a free shot straight into the D-cap as well. Team on the other flank has fallen back, but they've given good ground. <clears throat> Made up a lot of damage along the way. So the opposing ships that are over there are still in the game, but they're all fairly chunked and pretty beat up. Catch a brief glimpse of the Ranger there. He's trying to get away from this sort of push that's coming, coming towards him down the H-line. And that's a New York and a Colorado, right? That's not anything to get super excited about. He's faster than those ships by a few knots. He's got the rocket planes out looking for me. I don't want him to find out where I am until it's too late. You see what I did there? The AA was off until he was basically guaranteed to spot me. Then I turned it on, flipped on the defensive fire. My, my message there is, go away, rocket planes. I want to finish capping. One of the things that most players don't realize, the average aerial detection of a destroyer is like two and a half kilometers, right? It's, it's very low now. And if you leave your AA off rocket planes will not have time. The overwhelming majority of rocket planes in the game will not have time to line up an attack on you, even if you're stationary and they stumble across you at two and a half kilometers. It simply takes too much time. If you're driving right at them and they come at you, come across you at two and a half kilometers, there is no way 
that like they'll get a rocket for attack off. Very few carriers even have a shot at it. Like Zeppelin, maybe, maybe Audacious, maybe the, maybe the high tier Brits and Zeppelin, and that's like it. They just will. It won't happen. They don't have time for the reticle to engage an attack and launch rockets downrange. Twelve minutes gone. We have a two ship lead and a cap lead. Things feel pretty good. We're continuing to slaughter these little tier six planes. I've gotten good work out of defensive fire. Now we're going to move up here and into D. And let's see if we can pick it up. Oh, oh, ladies and gentlemen, I see a broadside ranger. You know what that means. <laughs> it's time for the AP. And I fire, these guns fire a lot faster than those guns in Nicholas that you saw a few videos ago. Now the trick is I've got to lead him right to get them far enough aft. You have to land these citadels between the superstructure and the stacks. There we go. We're racking them up now. Oh, yeah. Bring on the damage. At this point, I almost don't care if he actually hits me with some of the bombs. He doesn't. And unfortunately for me, my friendly air... I'm sorry, my friendly battleship behind me cleans up the ranger. But I do get some good damage uh, out of his hull before he goes away. Game's winding down here, basically. I'm going to step into the decap in a moment. The enemy cachalot is, well, that guy's effed off. We don't have any idea where he is. And the opposing ships on the other flank, the Caracciolo and the Mahan, kind of over there on the five line and the eight line. Not really a threat, not all that useful to the enemy team. In fact, the next thing that dies will probably end the game. Might be the Mahan. Uh, it's probably not going to be the cachalot. We probably won't be able to spot that guy again. But I'm here for the cap. Hey. Caps are XP, baby. I've already got one full cap. If I can pick up another, that's an even better XP result, presuming we can get there. Just sort of waiting here, but the game's going to tack out, time out, and, uh, and tick down before I'm able to finish that back cap. But I did get some good damage. We had quite a few plane kills um, and a solid little XP result here in Mahan. So... 65,000 damage, no torpedo hits, and uh, no offense, get used to that in Mahan. <laughs> get used to that in this ship. The torpedoes are still a challenge to use, and the problem you're going to run into, and I'll, I'll give you a bit of a preview for the next video, Benson has these same torpedoes, and they do not get any easier to use. In fact, they get more challenging because Benson's torpedo launchers move up to a quintuples, which means they get an even longer reload, but the torpedoes aren't any faster, and they don't hit that much harder, and it gets much more challenging. But some lots of good plane kills, Good chunk of damage out of the guns. 2,000 base XP. Can't really complain about that. Presumably that's on the back of the plane damage. Um, I didn't have a whole lot of spotting damage. Only, 50, only a little less than 14,000. Um, I was able to put a good chunk of damage into the Ranger. Uh, farm the Ganice and the Visby a little bit. But that was about it. Most of that was probably cap points. Cap points, plane kills, and the damage we got into the Ranger. So yeah, just an, a nice little... Just kind of an example of what you can get up to in Mahan. You see... She's still as maneuverable as Farragut. The guns fire a little faster. The AA is serviceable against a tier six, a tier six aircraft carrier. But as I noted earlier, you're going to have to temper your expectations when you start squaring off against tier eight carriers. You'll have to be much more circumspect about when you turn your AA on and when you don't. All right, guys. Well, there you go. There is our learn to play video for Mahan. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful. I hope you learned something. It's not... Playing this ship is not radically different from Farragut. The biggest adaptation you have to make is now you have longer range torpedoes. You're still a little low on the health scale. You know, that's not really an adaptation. You're used to that by now. But the torpedoes are the big upgrade, right? And knowing when to use your gunpower and when not to. Um, early, it's a big risk. Using it mid and late is much more reliable when there's hopefully fewer things to shoot at you and hopefully the destroyers and, and slider targets that you're shooting at have already given up some of their health to your teammates. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Wash your hands. Be safe. I'll catch you next time.